We um, often get a lot of questions around why we recommend certain groove dimensions and how putting a seal in what we would call a non-standard groove might impact the sealing performance of that design. So today I'm going to focus on the groove width and kind of talk to why we say the groove needs to be a certain width to accommodate different scenarios. Hi, my name is Michael Sheely. I'm one of the application design engineers with Technetics. Today, I'm going to focus on talking about one of our products called our Helicoflex seal, which is a spring energized metallic seal that's primarily used when very tight leak rates are needed in a lot of high pressure, high temperature applications. We often get a lot of questions around why we recommend certain groove dimensions and how putting a seal in what we would call a non-standard groove might impact the sealing performance of that design. So today I'm going to focus on the groove width and kind of talk to why we say the groove needs to be a certain width to accommodate different scenarios. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through two videos of seals being compressed in a 2D axisymmetric model out of ANSYS. Um, so right now I'm going to flip over to my other computer and kind of walk through this first video with a seal and a standard groove. As I had previously mentioned, this is one of our Helicoflex Spring Energized Seals that is sitting in a typical groove that we would recommend for its size. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this video and then talk through some of the things that are happening while the seal is being compressed. So once the seal reaches full compression, you're going to notice that the seal is not contacting the internal and external wall of the groove. And that is a key component when talking about the sealing performance of this system. On this external side, you can see that there's a slight gap, and this gap is so that this outer wall can provide support for the seal so that as it undergoes repeated pressure cycles, there's not a lot of room for the seal to move, which could cause the seal to fail in fatigue. On the internal side, there's a much wider gap, and the biggest factor driving this is so that the, our customers don't see high price increases for machining type tolerances on the internal wall of the groove, and high price increases for needing to control the internal diameter of the seal itself. So the next thing to focus on that will be seen once the seal is unloaded is the seal track area. So the seal track is these flat places on the top and bottom of the seal. And these have been optimized for the compression of this seal so that there's enough plastic deformation of this outer layer of material to fill voids in the surface finish of the flange, and that's what gives these seals very tight leak rate performance when exposed to very high temperature or high pressure applications. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to transition over to another video that's going to show this same exact seal, but in a much smaller groove, and then talk through some of the problems that happen when the groove is not wide enough for the seal. So here's the same Helicoflex seal that we had previously shown in the last video, but now it's sitting in a much smaller groove. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play this video of it being compressed and talk about what happens when the seal starts contacting the groove walls. So right here, the seal started to contact this groove wall, which remember we said it's not ideal for optimizing the sealing performance. So what this causes is the outer jacket material starts to push up. And right here, you can see that it is pushed up and started to flatten out more than in the previous video. This increased width in the contact area is going to overall increase the total contact area for the seal and decrease the contact pressure at this full compression. Decreasing that contact pressure is going to reduce the amount of plastic deformation that outer jacket material has undergone. And what that does is it increases the ability for the system pressure to push material out of the way and increase the leak that will be seen across the system boundary. So, when trying to optimize the sealing performance of the system and reach those very tight leak rate performance targets, it's very critical to have the optimum groove design so that the seal can be compressed as intended. Something else to note is even when the seal is unloaded, you can see that it still remains in contact with the groove, which could cause damage to the groove or even issues getting the seal out of the groove during regular maintenance periods. So like I said, it's Really, you may have to think about how the groove is going to affect the sealing performance of the design, and it needs to be optimum to get the tight leak rate performances when you're dealing with very high pressure or high temperature applications. So if this is something that you and your team is dealing with currently, please see the description below to see how you can get in contact with our engineering or sales team, and we would love to help you optimize your sealing performance. 
Thank you for tuning in today, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.